Greetings, my fellow Kerbinauts. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Kerbal Space Program 2, Episode 7, Rendezvous and RCS Bugs. Adding a section to the space station. Cool. Very cool. So we got to decide what is a meaningful thing to add to the space station and how to add it. So let's take a look at the space station as a point of reference first. So that would be over at the tracking station. So let's go to the Kerbal Space Center and then to the tracking station once that loads. So here is our... Uh, I don't see the space station anymore. Uh, I see the orbit. No, here it is. Why isn't it showing up? Because it thinks it's debris. All right. I think the first section that I add to the space station is going to make it a, an official space station. So it's going to be very, very, very simple, in other words. Because technically, this doesn't have a command pod, so the game thinks it's um, just fancy debris orbiting in perfect orbit of Kerbin. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, designing something super stupidly simple. So let's go to the command pods. This is going to be unmanned, by the way. So I'm going to do a large remote guidance unit. with a and and this will be a good demonstration of docking and coupling um we're gonna want uh some lights so that i can see where i'm going a docking port So this is just a probe core and a docking port. And the docking port's going to dock to the large section of the bottom of the space station. I believe we had a large section on the space station, right? Uh, well, here. Here's a really good uh, way to tell. Open Shona. Uh... Load? No. Where is my crafts? <laughs> I've been saving them. It was... Was it this? Uh, yes. It was this. So the part that we want to bind to you is this, this docking port. So this is a CC-375D dock port, which would be... No, oh, not stack separator. Which would be the large. So we're going to attach a probe core like that. And that's why you save your prototypes, so that you can do that. Uh, raffle for the name of this probe core. Of course, this probe core is eventually going to connect to the Shona and uh, lose its name. So it's a temporary craft, but that's fine. So let's build it now that we know what it is. So it's going to be a large, a large probe core. A large docking port on top of the probe core. Some lights. Like I said, it's really simple, and it's just a way to, to demonstrate docking. So we'll do some... Uh, let me do nav lights. I haven't used nav lights yet. 
So, some 6x nav lights, and then some spotlights. Three with a tilt. This will be the first craft that I will add RCS to. So then I'll do um, six copy RCS. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll remove the nav lights or I'll have the nav lights in front of the, the RCS. So the RCS is going to help me uh, dock better. And I'm really, really bad at docking. So, uh, you know, just so that you know. Uh, then if we're if we have our RCS, we're gonna want um, mono prop fuel, which is the RCS fuel. I probably don't need a large thing of that. That's kind of absurd. So I'll do a small. I'll do uh, a medium of it. It's still a lot of fuel, but given how bad I am, you know, might be required. I actually don't like the way that looks. Oh my god, the XL. What is the... Oh, dear lord. It's like a Borg cube, but a Borg sphere. This thing is huge. Uh, all right. I think it will be look more elegant if I put it on like that. Maybe I'll have more fuel as well. Station will be assimilated exactly. Uh, okay. Then below that, I'm gonna want another RCS, or maybe even above the docking port. I'll do it that way. No, stop being crazy. Another inline reaction wheel. Not regular wheels. A large inline reaction wheel that will make this very controllable. And that also opens up additional spots for me to have more fuel, given my uh, fully acknowledged lack of docking ability. But even then, I'm okay -ish at it. It's just a, it's a difficult thing to do, and I don't do it very often in, in the game. There we go. Beautiful bubbles. And I'll do this uh, as a 3x so it doesn't block the the lights. But that should still have a center of gravity that works. Alright, so we have plenty of monoprop fuel. We have, um... These probably need to be in the... more in the center. There we go. Refining the design now. All right, that, that works. So this is what's going to be docked. And I'll have another large docking port on the bottom. So that we can add to it again if we want. And then the this entire system will have to be launched and got, get pretty close to to the correct orbit. Uh, are the nav lights gone? I think so. Let, let, let me put them back in. I don't know what they look like, but uh, I don't want to find out. So I'll have a uh, six nav lights. Oops. Pointing backwards. Should look pretty cool. The name of this probe core is going to be the GMT. No, great. I'm sending a giant clock named the GMT up into space. Right on. Uh, this thing... Do I... Okay, let's do a stack separator. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud now. A stack separator here. And then... Maneuverer fuel. Uh, let's 
So a big old fuel thing, but like attached to a labradoodle. And then below that stack separator, I'm going to add, just for super stability, a large reaction wheel. So it's really easily controllable. I'll add, because uh, I'm not paying for it, because it, you know, it's free. Add some solar panels, just so that the, the thing doesn't run out of power while I'm up there. And then below this is going to be the thing that breaks Atmo. So, what is this, XL now? That looks weird, but like, whatever. Weird is cool. So then, under there, uh, more liquid fuel. But like, just straight XL liquid fuel. Like this. To a mammoth. Which is the most bang from a buck. And then radial um, solid to break Atmo. But I probably don't need too much of it because the thing doesn't weigh a ton. So we'll do three Clydesdales. Looking good. Add a little bit of uh, strutting and stability in our dynamics. So cones. Uh, the decoupler could decouple a uh, tip cone, because what you could do is you can, um, even these docking ports can technically decouple. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to add it. I kind of like the flat top. It's weird. And I like weird. So let's strut this up a little bit so it's not a wacky, wavy, wobbly, nasty thing to control. You don't think I need those SRBS? That's fine. I probably don't. I'm still gonna add them. Just because I don't need them doesn't mean I don't want them. Okay. So this was the GMT. 2001. Save it. The staging looks fine. Not yet. All right, now the staging's fine. Yep, okay. Staging looks good. Uh, it needs a comm satellite. That's the last thing, because it is a probe core. It's going to need to connect phone home. So, I will do just one high gain antenna. I'll do three for the symmetry. It's not necessary, but I'll do three. Okay, we're good to go. I don't even think this thing's gonna need winglets, to be honest, because it's uh, it's pretty stable. But I'll add them. That might help with the gravity turn. Fail over redundancy. Yeah, exactly. Plenty of fails to be had. The other thing that we're probably going to want to do is to wait for the station to be in the right position in the sky because we're going to want to do some sort of intercept. So it's actually almost there. I'm going to time accelerate a little bit for a rendezvous to about here so we can connect up to it a little bit easier. All right, here we go. Time for blast off. Is 
Is this our first night launch? It might be. It looks real nice. Looks really cool as a night launch. You can kind of see the heat from all the thrust. G-forces aren't really something to be concerned about with the um, with the probe core, though. It doesn't have a human pilot. I like all the lights of the complex. That's a really nice touch. Oh, the red reflection? No, no, it's just that's just filters. I could be pink if you wanted me to be pink. Or, or blue. Uh, blue. There we go. Blue. But for launches, I like red. Oh, I killed my key lights. There we go. I've corrected it. All right, let's start uh, gravity turning. We're high up enough. Wow, this thing is easy. Easy to control. No wobble. No fuss, no muss. Well, or I took my eyes off the gimbal. There we go. The reactive music's a really nice touch, too. Where the music matches sort of launch time and different milestones as you ascend. Frame rate's uh, having a bit of a doozy right now. It's the first time I've noticed uh, actually low frames. But I don't have to do anything. I'm in the middle of a gravity turn. Brick game looks good though, that's probably why. Yeah, well, soon I'll have a new rig and I'll be able to run this even even more smoothly. Of course, uh, streaming and, and recording at the same time is playing, I'm sure, is doing wonders to the hardware. Let me check on my uh, performance. Hmm. Oddly enough, I have plenty of overhead. That's surprising. Am I building the new rig myself? Yeah. Yep. What are you doing, tumbling? Oh boy. Uh, let's point prograde. I have enough RCS on this thing that this should be no problem. Or inline reaction, rather. Well, both. Once we're pointing in the right direction, I'm going to gun it. There we go. That's close enough. Because we still are suborbital. And not reaching space. All right. Oh, oh. Needs a finer touch. Oh god, needs a much finer touch. I guess this mammoth does a gibble as, as well. I'm trying to use the RCS, but... Uh, I think it's best if I just try to point up and wait until we're at Apple Apps. RCS is not on now, but it was on. It's on now. There we go. RCS. You'll see the green button up here light up when RCS turns on. 
All right, so our Apple apps is uh, 90K. That's enough. And... Oh, I can't focus that as a tar target because I don't think it's, like, interesting. That will make it trickier. I like it. All right, so let's circularize. Boink. And warp to next maneuver, pointing at the maneuver node. The rendezvous might be tough because the game um, was sort of fussing that it's it's debris, and I don't think you can do a rendezvous with debris as easily, but we'll see. I'm determined. And I have tons of Delta V. Of course, correct. Once I circularize, I'll save. So just trying to get that parry apps up to 70k ish. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Up, oh, done. We are orbiting. So, the. We are moving faster than the. So the velocity of the Shona is about 2.1. And the velocity of ours. Really? It's not. Uh, is 2.25. So, if I want to slow down, we have to actually. Um, raise our Apple apps and Perry apps so that we move slower in, in relation to the Shona for a rendezvous. So now I'm going to push the Apple apps to maybe 175 and the Perry apps to 175 or 180. That's fine. Just has to be higher than the Shona uh, in order to slow down in, in relation to the Shona so that we can rendezvous. It also looks like we're on a slightly different plane. So that actually might be my next moon over. Uh here to correct the plane differences. Just eyeballing it, really. But that's because I can't force it as a target. Let's correct that. There we go. That puts us what looks to be pretty, yeah, pretty close. So that's our next maneuver. Point at the maneuver node and accelerate. It's really weird that I'm aiming for debris. Actually, I'm not even entirely certain that the game will let you dock with debris. I hope it does. Because otherwise, this is a lot of work for nothing. But we're all... It's, it's all learning. Worst case scenario, it's still learning. That's pretty close to the same plane. So now let's point prograde and raise the Apple apps because the Apple apps uh, is has us re-entering now. And I probably don't need to be red because we're in a pretty stable, balanced orbit. So Apple apps in 20 seconds. How far am I into this? Uh, I've already done a Mun lander. I've built a space station, and what I'm currently working on is at the top of the screen, if you're wondering. All right, so now we're in a somewhat circularized, not very eccentric orbit, and I want to do a rendezvous. What's going to be really tricky is trying to rendezvous with debris, because there's not going to be a, um, like, intercept markers. So at this point, what I want to do is point uh, retrograde, slow down in relation to the to the Shona so that I can intercept the Shona. So this is sort of like uh, you remember Firefly when Wash tried to line up with that station from like 70 kilometers away to try to dock from a distance, like throwing a dart, a lawn dart from like a mile away. That's kind of what I'm trying to do now a little bit. Because normally when you um, try to dock with something, 
you can right click on it and set it as a target and then fine tune things. I can't do that because I never added a probe core to that thing. So uh, this is all like visual rendezvous, which I'm already bad at docking. So visual rendezvous is like uh, even harder. So if I want to speed up in, re in relation to it, I'm going to burn more pr uh, retrograde slowing down even further to try to catch or uh, you know lowering my orbit even further to try to catch up to it periaps is still above the edge of space okay let's go prograde again Yeah, there's, there's no missions yet in the game. You have to make up your own missions because it's all sandbox. There's no, like, career mode or anything like that. Okay. It's going to look like we're slowing down, but we'll have a close pass. Here. And I'm going to do something ridiculous here, which is, like, anti-science. I'm just going to try to burn to it to match its orbit. So I'm a little further out than Then its orbit. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but here we go. Trying to match it as good as I can. With a slightly, um, with an orbit slightly closer to the planet so that we can really catch up to one another. I'm running out of fu fuel. Uh, in this stage, yeah. But I'm just about ready to eject it. I wonder if that worked. Oh, it did. So hitting the go button is better than hitting spacebar, apparently. So trust the go. That's good to know. It's a cute little probe, I think. Why can't I extend these? Do they break? No. Oh. Uh, I think they only extend once. So they're not part of the vessel actions as a result of this, it's a one-time thing, maybe. That would be a guess. After a few orbits like this, I should have raised my Apple apps. After a few orbits like this, uh, we'll be more aligned, provided I'm not dipping into the um, the atmosphere. But on this pass, I'm going to raise my Apple apps so that I slow down for next pass, getting us even closer. There we go. So maybe one more. Oh, yeah, one more orbit. 
We should be near on top of one another. Well, in you know. There we go. Very, very, very close. So at this point, the because I can't um, target it, per se, what I'm going to want to try to do is to match my orbit with its orbit as close as possible. Because that's going to be the best way I can sort of get to it, so to speak. I lack the, like, technical terms for it, but, you know. But this is how to try to dock with something that can't be targeted for docking. To try to match it, its trajectory and speed as best as you can on close passes. Yeah, there's too many rings. Okay, this will be my next burn, I think. Just do so. Thank you for the sub, by the way. Man, why did I not add a probe core to that thing? I don't know. It would be really nice if the game allowed you to to uh, to add debris as a focus target. That way, you could actually do debris cleanup missions. And also, it's really not that different than um, than uh, picking up asteroids. So it looks like we have a near intercept here. So I'm going to create a maneuver point here and try to match it as much best as I can using the maneuver uh, calculators. Oh, that gets us real close. Oh, yeah. Because if we can match it, its orbit uh, while we're close to one another, it has me near docking. So th this is a... This here is is pretty, pretty good. So point to the maneuver and get ready for this burn. I think I'm going to be able to, well, I, I think I'm going to be able to get really close to it, but whether I, I actually dock it, I don't know. But th this is this is how to do it, is you get, you try to get to a point where your paths will intercept and you want to course correct to match the path so that you stay near one another rather than whizzing by one another in space, right? So this next burn has me sitting very close to it. And if I do this correctly and I keep I keep maneuver correcting every time we get very close to one another, eventually we will I'll be within its um, I'll be close enough to actually dock. That's the hope, at least. I made it a challenge. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I suppose if you if you have a um, a Kerbal like stranded up into space. This is sort of what you would have to do because I don't know if you can target a Kerbal or target debris. But essentially, I'm trying to dock with debris, which is uh, which is challenging. All right, that looks close. So now our two orbits are almost aligned, and uh, you know, and what I what I need to do is try to find like future intercepts, or in this case, because we're close enough, I might be able to burn retrograde. So it catches up to me. All right, let's try to accelerate time to see if we can get even closer. I don't know how far away it is, though, because it is debris. I can't target it. So where is the next close pass? Maybe it's here. I keep it keeps looking like it's uh, up ahead. Okay, there we go. This this is actually useful. So from here, I slow down because my Apple apps is a little wider, allowing it to catch up to me. 
So if I burn, oops. If I shrink my periaps a little bit, then I'll make up for falling behind. So I'm not matching its orbit perfectly, but it will allow me to get closer. So then I just wait until we have a very close intercept. Which should be uh, coming on next pass, maybe. No, I might have lowered my periaps a little bit too much there. We'll fix. So if I want to slow down, I just go to the Apple apps and burn prograde, raise my periaps to slow down a little bit. Oop. Overshot it. And of course I'm pointing the wrong way. Flip the ship around. Okay. So now in relation to that craft, I'm going to be moving slower on this pass. Having it catch up with me a little bit. Yeah, it's really, really hard to do without targeting. I'm way out of practice because I haven't played this in a while. Okay, this has us uh, nearly on an intercept course soon. As you can see, we're very close to one another. Slowing down time as much as I can. And now I'm going to create a moon over node uh, to try to match its orbit even better. So it's a tiny maneuver node. But at this point, given our um, proximities, small course corrections make a lot more sense. We're nearly at the point where I'm going to be able to see it out the window. Oh, yep, there it is. Nine kilometers away. That's pretty good for, you know, eyeballing, I think. In fact... Uh... I just saved. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just launch to it. It's really hard to tell what <laughs> way I should be pointing to try to get there. Like this, maybe? This is such sketch science. Oh, are we off course? back this way a bit. The numbers are decreasing, so that's good. It looks like we're due for a really close pass up ahead. I think I'm getting close. Yeah, I'm getting closer to it. Five kilometers away. Get over here. Normally, you would have uh, targeting information to be able to match it. Oh, is five kilometers the best I could do? I think we're moving apart now. No, we're not. Three kilometers. I think what it's uh, two point five kilometers that it like loads in for you. No, get back here. All right, pause time. So we are 2.5 kilometers away. This is our like close intercept. We'll probably be within like a kilometer here. Oh, why isn't it lo not letting me do a maneuver node? Oh, shoot.
What I need to do is eyeball a prograde maneuver that has me match it, which is too big brained for me to manage. Where is it? Where is it? I don't know where it is anymore. Damn it. We're like on top of one another. But the game, probably rightfully so, doesn't let you create a maneuver plan while you're paused. So I just have to create a very crude one and hope that I'm matching it as good, well, as you know, as close as I can. All right, where is it in space? Three kilometers up. Are we closing? No, nope, it's getting further away from me, so let's course correct again. Thirty percent fuel, yeah, I see that. Yeah, this might end up being a fail just because I I can't um point target so much harder. So much harder. All right, we are getting closer to one another. We are so close. We are so, so close. Uh, we're almost close enough that I can just mono propel to it. Because I have tons of mono propellant. I'm running out of um, oxidizer and methane, but have plenty of mono prop. But because our two orbits are so almost completely overlapping, it's really, really, really difficult for me to even see perceptible differences in our two orbits. So I can't even correct for it anymore because it's like overlapped. So I'm doing my best to try to like correct for it. But, uh, oh, 800 meters. Okay, save. And, um,. Uh, get back here. What direction are you in? Oh, this is so frustrating. 400 meters. It's it's a a quarter kilometer away. And it's uh cuz I can't target it. I can't tell how to fix the differences. All right. I think that does a bit. No, no. Oh, that was the wrong button. Ah, I keep... It's such fine course corrections that it's easy to fat finger the controls. So there's that. Like that. Yep, there we go. Where is it? It got away from me. Let's try to use skinnier fingers. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I can... I, I don't think I'm going to be able to manage it without it being uh, a valid target. I'm going to have to scrub it. I mean, I do have infinite fuel, but I don't want to abuse that. Because I just... I built it wrong. And that's my fault. Yeah. Because you can see that we're now separated. 
Might be easier in chase mode. It might be, but I, it's it's too late. I could try to do one more load of that quick save that I made with the like 800 meter pass. So I'll try one more time the hard way, and then if not, I can put a new station up there, just loading the original design but adding a probe core, and that's the and maybe a little extra stability because it was wobbly, but that's the only changes that would need to be made. The problem is I can't, I, it's not a valid target because it's debris, so I can't burn ahead of it because I don't know where it is, you know what I mean? Because it's not, it's not a, it's not a valid target. It's easy to say, oh, just burn towards it, but like, what the hell is towards it? I can only eyeball it, right? That's what I'm trying to do now, but it's uh it's maddening to to try to figure out the orientation of the craft versus the target. As you can see, I'm just I don't know what is up anymore. Even though we're 300 meter separation. Come on. Point towards it. There it is. Hundred meter separation. This is working. Ninety. Oh god, don't hit those giant panels. Why is it tumbling? Okay, it stopped tumbling. That's good. Uh, trying to dock to something that you can't target? Oh god, what the heck? Is gonna be, uh... A difficult? Can I select this as a target? Oh, there we go. So I can select the Clampotron as a target. That's something. Oh, I think my engine was just nudged it. Oh my god. Hide the stupid parts manager. It's covering up my, my screen. All right, let's point target. Because at least that gives me some sort of point of reference here. Get a little closer. So now, now that I'm close enough to the Clampotron, which is the docking port, I can point at it. But I don't want to point directly at it. I want to align with it on the same plane. So that's slightly different than just pointing at it. But right now, all I'm trying to do is get a little closer to the, uh, to the, to the docking port. And now nav ball is in the target mode. I'm close enough to, to warrant that. Whoa, and I just misfired. Big time. All right, point to target. Kill the... Kill retrograde. Here we go. Oh, yep, too much. Yeah, I'll quick save now. So now the relative velocity between our two vessels is this number here. I'm going to point to target and blast towards it. But we're on the... Um, here, save again. We're on the same relative plane now. 
sort of. Uh, the question I have now is, where is the docking mode selection? How's the game performing? Uh, fine. Me? I'm performing less than fine, but the, the game's fine. I haven't had, really had any issues. Um, one second. Settings. What I'm looking for is the docking um, key. Because it docking was near the top. Uh, breaks. To, oh, uh, for the controls. Input. Delete. Okay. Is it in docking mode? I don't... I don't think it is, though. It's certainly not handling like it's in docking mode. No, it's not in docking mode. The hell. Unless they change what docking mode is. Okay. What all I'm trying to do right now, I don't know why it's tumbling like crazy. I think it's my engine wash. But what all I'm trying to do is cut the relative velocities between our two crafts. And then, yeah, I'll probably ditch the big engine and do RCS only. Whoa! But it just so decouple my butt. All right, docking controls. Let's take a look at those real quick. Where is... I don't see... J-L-I-K-N-H, is that it? Yes. Yeah, that decoupler uh, was bad. How do I go up? Right now, the RCS is just trying to stabilize, and I don't want that. I, I don't care about that. So, forward... NH wasn't working. Like if I turn on sa turn off SAS. Yeah, that's N, which is spin. H is spin the other direction. J K nope. L Oh no, I, I don't even know where I'm going. I'm just tumbling here. Basically I want the bottom of the thrusters to, to sh fire. And there doesn't seem to be a key that does that only. I... Oh, I think it's... It's J. Okay, so let's point target and hit J. Nope, that didn't work. What the hell? Game. I want to go forward. So my decoupler there, like, decoupled with a force of 100 meters per second. Which is stupid. But I'm blasting towards it. A little worried about the amount of monoprop that I have.
Yeah, let me uh, let me do a quick save and uh, change the decoupling force so that it doesn't like eject me like a cannon. That would be ideal. I should have set it up to be to to do that ahead of time anyway. So, it is eighty meters away. Let's go to the decoupler. Decouple at low impulse. Perfect. That way I'm not being yeeted. Enter docking controls. Nope, docking controls. And time warp so that the thing stops tumbling. I'm going to adjust my relative velocities to target so that it's not uh, moving away from me. And then I can try to ease my way in. Why is that number increasing? Oh, did you change? Here, control from here. What the heck button I just hit? Okay, it wasn't Jay. Jay has me tumble. I think the problem is that because I have six times uh, symmetry, there isn't it. There isn't like a direction. It's not a directional. I should have probably only done four, which is my fault. Because I can't. There is no like up, so to speak. This thing, all of the docking controls, um, fire, like, fire opposite one another in, in like, a wildly uncontrollable way, as you can see. So, it might just be that my, the, the way I designed the RCS, uh, simply doesn't work the way you'd want it to. What I can try to do is use the the radial controls here but I'm already I'm already like not matching target at all hey Rem Remethep thank you for the thank you for the raid yeah I, I I don't think I don't think this is I'm gonna scrub all this um so go to the tracking station and just delete it all and start over because the um the RCS controls of that when I'm trying to go in one direction, it instead just flips me like a coin. So it's it's not even ever going to be controllable. Uh, so let's go ahead and destroy that craft. And then... Uh, what's weird about the debris, though, is this debris isn't... Oh, there we go. Nope. There we go. All right, got the debris. Perfect. Thank you for tuning in to Kerbal Space Program 2, which originally streamed live on Twitch, February 25th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream of mine. Farewell, my fellow Kerbonauts. 